Hard carrying your trash teammates in Valorant is hard enough as it is, and it can be legitimately impossible if you have terrible settings. Whether your game is stuttering all over the place, or you have a cursor that is holding down your mechanical skill and preventing you from improving, everything you need to have the perfect settings will be in this video. Now speaking of perfect, if you want to have the perfect day, smash that sub button, and you're going to get a 24 hour luck boost, and you're going to have the best day ever. So do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button. But enough of all that, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now the first thing that we need to talk about is FPS. And no, not first person shooter, frames per second. Frames per second is one of the most important things in the entire game of Valorant, or any competitive shooter for that matter. When we're talking about getting more kills and playing better, having flashier graphics does not matter. What matters is having a high FPS and a high monitor refresh rate so that the game feels overwhelmingly smooth and crisp without any fluctuation to your in-game performance. Now, in order to help you max out FPS, let's talk about all the video settings one by one so that you know the important things that you need to turn off and on to give you the best competitive advantage. Now, the first thing you need to understand is about resolution. And in Valorant, unlike some other games, having a different resolution gives you no advantage at all. That's why having the default 1920 by 1080 is fine just as it is, but you're also not hurt for having a different type of resolution, but just keep in mind that your field of view is always gonna be capped at 103. Now we need to talk about monitor refresh rate, and this is very important. This is the refresh rate at your monitor that's supposed to match your frames per second. Default monitors typically have 60 hertz, which means it can process up to 60 FPS, and the next level up from that is 144 hertz, all the way up to 240 and beyond. Now something that you need to know though is a 144 hertz monitor is hands down, unequivocally, indubitably, without a doubt, worth every cent from your piggy bank. Seriously, if you're playing shooters on your computer and you don't at least have a 144 hertz monitor, that should be your priority one upgrade. Ask for it for Christmas, ask for it for your birthday, smash that piggy bank, go flip some Craigslist stuff, Gary V style. I don't know what you gotta do, but get that 144 hertz monitor because I'm telling you, the quality of improvement from 60 hertz to 144 hertz is actually massive. And then last up, make sure you're in full screen. Come on, pretty simple, but make sure you're in it. Now we need to talk about limiting FPS because people do understand that your monitor refresh rate should match your FPS. Like you should have an FPS that is over your monitor refresh rate or at the monitor refresh rate. People understand that 60 FPS for 60 Hertz, 144 FPS for 144 Hertz and so on and so on. And all that being said, well, some people are gonna say to have unlimited FPS, just max it out. From my experience, this is not the best strategy. If you have no ceiling on your FPS, right? Then your FPS will peak past your monitor's refresh rate, which one, doesn't help you at all, and two, can bottleneck your CPU. Then when it goes to all the way to its peak, there will be a pullback, like a rubber band, and it can lag your game and whip you backwards all the way down underneath your monitor's refresh rate, which will affect your game. Now the key that you want here is actually stability in your refresh rate. So for example, let's say you have a 144 hertz monitor, test it and see how many frames per second that you can get at maximum when you're playing the game, and then leave a cushion for above the monitor refresh rate and below your max FPS. So for example, if your computer is good enough to push over 30 FPS and you have a 144 hertz monitor, perhaps capping your FPS at like 225 would give you a fair bit of wiggle room above your monitor's refresh rate but lower than your peak so that it never fluctuates at all and you always maintain that 144 hertz refresh rate at the very minimum with no rubber banding or any lag at all. Now the next thing that we have to talk about is the graphics tab and these are all the different options as far as graphics. These are all the things that you can mess with to improve your frame rate the most. Now the first thing is multi-rendering. You wanna turn this on. This will split computing across multiple cores for a better FPS and stable performance. But keep in mind this option will not be available for every computer, but if it is available for you, you should definitely turn it on. Now anything that has the word quality in it, which is the next four selections, every single one of those should be on low. Even pros with God tier PCs still have this shiz on low. When you're taking a game competitively, there is no reason for you to have it prettier at the cost of FPS. You never want a lag spike or anything like that in game just because you have a slightly prettier quality of graphics. And if pros with some of the best PCs in the world still have all this on low, you should have it on low as well. Now the next setting, vine, vine, uh, whatever it is, I don't know how to say it, 
just turn it off. Trust me, this is not a setting that you want. And the same thing with V-Sync, which V-Sync is supposed to help with screen tearing, but honestly, it is almost always bad. If you have screen tearing, you have other bigger problems, things that you probably need to replace, but you probably should just turn this off. Don't have V-Sync on, don't have the other V-Thing on. And then anti-aliasing should be completely off. Antitrophic filtering should be on the lowest setting, and I'm not gonna bore you with the details about what these two things do, but take my word for it, both of these things should be turned off as well. Now the next option is improved clarity, which increases contrast, which can be useful for seeing targets, but can slightly hurt FPS. Now this is going to be personal preference. You could try and see if you like it. If you don't like it, you could turn it off. If you don't see any difference, just turn it off because it's going to help your FPS. But if you do see a slight bit of improvement, you might as well keep it on because it's not going to affect your FPS that much. Now the last three settings, Bloom, Distortion, FP, Shadows, all turn them off. They are useless or even bad for your frames per second. Completely unnecessary. You don't need those settings at all. So these settings are going to give you the best FPS and is going to improve your performance to the highest level. And when your computer stutters, it's going to prevent you from dropping down below your monitor refresh rate. So even if you have a pretty decent computer, I would still suggest doing all these things. Now, the next thing you should do is you should go to the stats page. And in my opinion, you should turn on both the client FPS and the network round trick time, which is basically just an FPS tracker, frames per second tracker and a ping tracker. So you know what your ping is at any given moment. I like knowing these because then I can see where my FPS is going and I know that something's wrong if my FPS is like dropping down incredibly hard. Maybe there's something like my computer's overheating or anything like that. That's something that's really important for me to know. And then with ping tracking in particular, you could actually change up your playstyle depending on your ping. You could see if your ping is stable. If your ping is skyrocketing all over the place, maybe you have internet problems and you need to call your internet provider. Or if you have overwhelmingly high ping, you could play in a way that is far more aggressive to take advantage of peakers advantage. So it's actually just an important setting that I think you could just keep on at all times. And I think that these two settings are the only things you need, but they're very valuable for in-game information. Now let's move on to the next big topic, which is about crosshair. And I'm not gonna tell you at all what crosshair you should be rocking. Personally, you can rock a lot of different types of crosshair, but there are things that you should not do with crosshairs. And there's a lot of things that people are doing with crosshairs that is really holding them back. The first thing is people have way too big of crosshairs. Crosshairs are meant to be extremely small on your screen. They're meant to line up with headshots. Do you honestly want a crosshair to be smaller than a person said by a fair margin? And you do not want these giant crosshairs because the idea of a crosshair is, is a point of reference so that when someone's head moves in front of it or someone's body, you can see the contrast and it can allow you to line up that shot. So having a big one doesn't really make sense. So you should really strive for a much smaller crosshair. Now, the next thing is do not have a moving crosshair. No bloom, no nothing like that. Your crosshair should not move at all. All it's supposed to be is a reference point. You should be learning the other mechanical aspects of your gunplay, how it moves, recoil control, things like that. You do not want your crosshair to be doing it for you. This is something that you need to be learning how to do. And as such, you should have a crosshair that doesn't move at all. Every single pro has a stationary crosshair. And the big takeaway here being small and not moving is a crosshair should not be distracting. It should just be a tool. You should know it's there, but it should not be flamboyant. It should not be in your face. It's just a tool that you're using to help you aim a little bit better. Now, honestly, at a certain level, some players could probably play without a crosshair or with an almost non-existent one. I mean, look at Scream's crosshair. It almost looks like he doesn't even have one. He has such a tiny one and it's just a point of reference. So the big takeaway is at every level in pro play, every crosshair is either extremely unnoticeable or they're just meant to bring a center screen awareness so that it lines up with the background. Now, speaking of lining up with the background, this is why contrast is really important. And this will help you choose the color of your crosshair. Purple, green, blue, there are a lot of different colors. And honestly, I'm not gonna tell you what color to pick. It's your personal preference. But remember, the idea of a crosshair is that it's distinguished from the foreground. So when an enemy is walking into your crosshair, you notice that that is an enemy. You never want your crosshair to be blending in with either enemies or blending in with the background altogether because that can really confuse you. So remember, try to pick an obscure color. And now that I'm talking about small crosshairs, there is no limit to what kind of crosshair you want. I've seen people have all kinds of different types of crosshairs, whether they're little circles, whether they're actually just a dot. I've seen filled in crosses. I personally have a cross with a little bit of a gap inside. So if I see someone's head inside, I can shoot it. But honestly, that's also personal preference as well. Now, speaking of preferences, my personal preference is that you smash that like and subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it if you learned anything at all from this video or just found it a little bit entertaining. 
smash that sub button. And if there's any questions or any content that you want to see, definitely let us know in the comments down below. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time,